Welcome to another History Mystery. I'm Mimi, and here we are in the middle of May. Did you know that May is when people celebrate Historic Preservation Month? Historic preservation is part of our mission here at the museum. In fact, everything we do is to preserve history, your history. This also happens to be a special year for the museum. This year, we're celebrating the 70th anniversary of our organization. None of what we do today would be possible without the efforts of some Thomas County citizens who were concerned our history would be lost if we did not write it down. Today I'd like to talk a little about one lady in particular who helped get our museum started, Mary Lindsay Watt, or Uncle Bob, if you will. First, let's take a minute to talk about historic preservation. What is it anyway? Historic preservation is the preservation, conservation, and protection of buildings, objects, spaces, and concepts in order to save them for the next generation. In other words, taking care of what we have now so people in the future can enjoy and learn from it. In Thomas County, we have several organizations dedicated to preservation. Places like the Thomasville History Center, Jack Hadley's Black History Museum, Pebble Hill, Landmarks, the Genealogy Library, and many more. With so many organizations, it seems our area must have a long history of preserving our history, and we do. Museums and historic house tours have been around for a long time, but that's a topic for another video. In America, the historic preservation movement began right before the Civil War, when a group of women realized George Washington's home of Mount Vernon was falling into disrepair. Pretty soon, the movement took off around the country as a reaction to the push for industrialization and all things new and modern. In Thomas County, citizens began recording history in written form, often by writing into the newspaper. By 1876, Thomasville had its first public library and museum, filled with objects from around town and abroad. Snippets of history were saved in these manners, and soon we had our first historians eager to record information. Erwin McIntyre, a local lawyer and member of the prominent McIntyre family, became one of the county's first historians. He interviewed citizens of all backgrounds and wrote brief histories that were published first in the newspaper and later in small books. There was also Elizabeth Hopkins, or Bessie, as she was known to the community. After attending college, she started collecting family histories and soon moved on to collecting community stories. History-based organizations also became popular in this time, especially for women. Without jobs of their own or the ability to find their social status outside of their husbands, gathering family history became a way to make distinctions between who was in and who was out. Groups like the Daughters of the American Revolution and the United Daughters of the Confederacy began collecting artifacts from Thomas County, which were often put on display or discussed in lectures at the local library. This brings us back to the name I mentioned earlier. So who was this Bob Watt, and why is she important to the museum and the history of Thomas County? Bob Mary Lindsay Watt was born in 1891 in Carrollton, Missouri, nearly a thousand miles away from her future home of Thomasville. She reportedly hated the name Mary and was given the nickname Bob by her brother, later changed to Uncle Bob by a nephew. As the daughter of a harness maker, Bob grew up in a stable, middle-class family. Like other similarly situated families, she attended college and spent her summers visiting a family campground in Virginia. These visits to Camp Yellow Jacket would lead to her meeting William Augustine Watt, a young man from Thomasville, and her future husband. Their marriage took place in 1914, and the young couple soon settled in Thomasville, Will Watt was part of a well-connected family with a long and illustrious history in Thomasville. As his wife, Bob was expected to keep up the family name by joining social organizations and helping her husband with his own projects of town improvement. This included playing hostess to foreign exchange students brought to Thomasville through the Rotary Club's exchange program. The Watts' efforts led to hundreds of students coming to Georgia through the program and soon Thomasville gained several sister cities throughout the world. But Bob was influential in her own endeavors. As a member of several charitable and heritage-based organizations, she had access to many stories of the town's history, as well as the objects that symbolized Thomasville's achievements. Using her position in the community, Bob suggested writing a full history of the county. 
Many people had written those snippets of history in the newspaper or put up displays at the now defunct library museum. Erwin McIntyre even wrote a few short books on the area's history. No one had attempted a full history of the area, but Bob was determined. Her ideas spread quickly and led to the formation of the Thomas County Historical Society in 1952. With Bob acting as chairman, the group established a board, hired historian Bessie Hopkins as a collector and writer, and began gathering stories and artifacts. Bob was tasked with acting as our first curator. As artifacts and objects came in, Bob recorded their stories and even donated her own pieces as the museum grew. After years of doing her part as a volunteer and member, Bob was elected board president for the Thomas County Historical Society. Under her leadership, the society acquired several new collections. However, her most important contribution was securing the safety of these collections in the donation of our current museum building and the hiring of our first official curator. Bob received praise for her work upon her resignation from the board in 1973. Without her many contributions, this museum may never have come to fruition. Bob spent the rest of her life living in the town she loved until her death in 1978. After her death, many items from her estate were donated to the museum and remain part of our exhibits and archives today. If you stop by the museum from now until September, you'll be able to see some of her things, including this fantastic gown Bob wore in the 1920s. Look at that beadwork detailing. You can also see her silver trophy bowl presented as a token of thanks on her retirement from the museum board in 1973. And don't forget, it's our birthday soon. We're celebrating with a fun anniversary themed crate to plate on October 6. Tickets for our annual crate to plate event go on sale soon and we hope to see you there. If this video interested you, be sure to check out our website and social media where you can find more pictures like these and be sure to leave us a like on this video. What topic would you like to see on an episode of History Mystery? Let us know in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching!